Though Numenera shares much in common with many other RPGs and related media, there are some terms and vocabulary which are a bit unique, hard to immediately understand, and take on a kind of exclusivity that can make things a little confusing at first. In this video, I'm going to unpack exactly what the Numenera itself is. I'll go over this in three ways. First, I'll cover the in-world, lore definition of what the Numenera is, what NPCs and player characters mean when they use the word. I'll then look mechanically at what the Numenera is in terms of ciphers, artifacts, oddities, and discoveries. Finally, I'll offer some of my own perspectives on what the Numenera is in terms of a gaming and plot device and how you may wish to consider and view it for your own experiences, whether you're a player or a GM. Defined most directly, the Numenera are any sort of technological products or phenomena of unimaginable complexity and mystery. It exists in the Ninth World as a remnant of previous eras, civilizations who may or may not have been human, but called the Earth home and built vast and endlessly complex civilizations. The game takes place a billion years in the future, but it may be more helpful to think of this billion number as a guess, dramatic gesture, or simply something to express time that is difficult to comprehend. What's essential is that this is a far-flung future that has no trace of a line to our current civilization. It is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to follow exact lines of history across these other civilizations that inhabited the world. As a result, the Numenera represents an eclectic collage of technology, ranging from complex computers capable of thought so much so that we may call them intelligences, technology that could radically alter and shift the intrinsic trust we place into the basic laws of reality like physics, technology that could alter the behavior of an ecosystem, environment, or even the location and behavior of a planet, the ability to control and influence the world at the microscopic level Level through nanotechnology, the ability to tear holes in reality and enter different dimensions of time and space, the capability to traverse the stars and build galactic spanning empires with enough industry. All of these civilizations, separate worlds unto themselves, are now long gone. What remains now are either products they directly created or manifestations and phenomena that exist in the Ninth World as the result of what these civilizations produced. The Numenera is everywhere in the Ninth World, from buried ruins far outside the reach of civilization to the technology that is repurposed to heat the homes of those living in towns and cities. It is what every person in the Ninth World has to contend with, directly or indirectly. It is responsible for shaping and affecting the Earth as it is known, from microscopic life to the physical structure of the planet itself. These changes have left the Earth in many ways unpredictable and very weird. Abandoned by its previous inhabitants, the Numenera is either left to be dormant, discarded remnants of their habitation on Earth waiting to be rediscovered or repurposed, or it has run wild and unchained, free to shape what it finds in the world into something weird and unfamiliar, creating the potential for wonder or calamity, or both. The Numenera is a blanket term for any sort of technology that is vast and likely unknowable in its origin or even function. Its mystery often leads many to simply refer to it and understand it as a kind of magic, and given its unpredictability, the kaleidoscopic nature with which it presents itself to the humans of the Ninth World, magic is perhaps one of the best ways to describe it. Many fear it when it is in its most wild form, it can spell fates potentially worse than death. Others learn to live with it, learning what they need to in order to get through the day. There are those who also wish to study what they can, perhaps some with an eye toward understanding the past, but more than likely with the intent to use these remnants to build a better future. There are also those who grow to master it, be it from a great capacity for study and knowledge or mysterious talents, such individuals may grow to become unstoppable forces all on their own. Human civilization on the Ninth World barely has enough recorded history to cover a millennia, yet in this span of time they have made some very quick advances. Social order is still perhaps very much what like we as 21 first century humans may know from the documentation of our own society and culture's earliest days, but it isn't out of the question to assume that by being in the presence of such wondrous technological remnants, human societies, cultures, and governments may be incredibly varied and versatile. Possibly, in some of the darkest areas of the Ninth World, they may be under the control of such technology, processes, or mandates of previous eras that remain active. 
In the closest thing we could recognize as civilization lies a group of nine countries who have all reached an agreement, if not an uneasy one, to cease their fighting and conflict for the betterment of humanity. This largely has been made possible from the work of the Order of Truth, a quasi-religious organization established a few hundred years prior after the revelations of what could be gained from revering and studying the past with great respect. Though the nature of their functions and beliefs as religion may be up for debate, their commitment, often through what looks like or feels like worship to the deep past of the earth, has brought with it a kind of clarity and trust in an organization that may provide the expertise needed to allow societies to live and expand with peace, safety, and even potential mastery of the Numenera. The individual members of this organization are known as Aeon Priests, and they are sought for their expertise and guidance. This trust, however, can and often is sometimes abused, particularly in the regions that lay outside of the territory of the Steadfast, where priests can establish control without any need to remain obedient to the Order of Truth. It is there where the trust common folk place in Aeon Priests when it comes to living with and making the most of the Numenera may be abused and twisted into vicious control and tyranny. But it is also where, perhaps, the tenants of the Order may be able to live most true to its ideals, divorced from the complications of the political struggles among the Nine Kingdoms of the Steadfast. The Numenera is everywhere. Some might say it is everything. The prevalence of vast, unimaginably complex technology affects the day-to-day -day lives of individuals, the collective experiences of groups and societies, and shapes the currents that politics follows. Many see it as a great gift, something to even praise the past civilizations for bestowing upon this young and growing human civilization, while others may fear it as an inescapable curse. Others, perhaps most, may not give much thought to discerning the philosophical nature of the Numenera. They merely accept it as the existence they live in, ignore it where it's benign, harness it where it's useful, and fear and respect it where it is dangerous. The Numenera is more than the flavor of the setting of the Ninth World. It is more than the game's lore, as it is what players will be using in virtually every session they play. It will often be the focal point, or at least inseparable from, any given adventure or quest. To the degree to which it may fade into the background, it should do so only in its fluidity, taking on a magical essence that strays far from the deep, rational explanation for its wonders. This is perhaps best understood in the game's esoteries, a term and function similar to spells and magic in other RPGs. The nano character type has access to a variety of esoteries and has a choice of a number of backgrounds and specializations that may frame their abilities in different ways. The most meta way of referring to these abilities is as spells, but a character may view an offensive esoteric such as Onslaught as an execution of their deep understanding and control over nanite particles, or ambient radiation they can condense into a remote attack, pools of dark matter they can tap into and harness to deploy in devastating ways. They may see this ability granted to them by means of a deep knowledge, perhaps one they have to study to comprehend or spend hours in meditation to manifest. They may instead see this ability as acquired through possessing a rare object of the ninth world, a ring, bracelet, amulet, weapon, tattoo, exoskeleton, or anything that makes sense for a character concept. Other characters may see their abilities as stemming from implants or deep physical changes and modifications to their very biology. Some may or may not have a logical explanation for these things, but instead see it quite literally as a form of magic they can tap into and use, and don't much care for the practical explanation. A lot of the ways in which the Numenera can be understood and used is up to player creativity and ingenuity. You, as the player, make the world fit to your character concept, not the other way around. A lot of this gets into the deep meta of what Numenera provides to players and GMs, but this is essential in understanding mechanically what the Numenera does. Essentially, any character action which cannot be explained by the most simple concepts of physics and biology is in some way related to the Numenera, and the way in which this technically functions is entirely up to player creativity. The setting offers recommendations, but it almost never defines. Any phenomenon, structure, or set piece that is otherwise outside of the bounds of the simple objects a people with only 900 or so years of recorded history could feasibly produce is, in effect, of the Numenera. Outside of esoteries and other player abilities, which can only be explained by the fantastic, the game also involves the use of ciphers, artifacts, oddities, and discoveries. 
Ciphers are one-time use items regularly discovered by players that grant a wide variety of abilities such as offensive attacks that deal devastating damage, objects that will modify character behavior and appearance to affect social and role-playing situations, objects that augment abilities to manipulate and navigate the environment, objects that buff existing player items such as weapons and armor, objects that remove status effects, heal or boost player abilities in different ways, objects that allow for abilities that are tied to a specific specific area of the setting, and much more. You can think of ciphers in any number of ways. While some characters will see these as distinct objects in-game, the book makes it clear that these are in fact player abilities. These are very similar to magic items, potions, scrolls, wands, or spells that one must prepare every day in other RPGs. Though I'm saving the meta perspectives for the next section, it's important to understand that these objects allow every player to have access to abilities that in other games are often gated off to specific classes. True, more Numenera-focused characters will be able to carry more ciphers at any given time and perhaps make better use of them, but that they are open to all characters reveals the way that the cipher system more broadly severs the rigid structure of character classes found in other games, allowing players to build their characters with greater freedom and conception, growing them as it fits the story they wish to tell and the game they wish to play. Artifacts, in a way, are a step above ciphers, more akin to magic weapons as we might find them in other games, but only in terms of their uniqueness and power, as they can come in all manner of different functions. Unlike ciphers, they typically last for multiple uses, each with their own depletion rate. Finding one of these objects is one of the key ways of gaining XP in the game. Oddities represent strange, unique objects that don't offer any direct function, but players may be able to sell and trade with them, build stories around them, or even serve as a catalyst for a major plot point with some work with the GM. Their direct use or original purpose is rarely understood, and they're typically known for their strange quirks and behaviors. Numenera Discovery also outlines one final category, that of discoveries, which are in general meant to describe any sort of phenomena, experience, or place that the players find in their adventures. As said in the opening, the Numenera is everywhere, so coming upon an underground lab that appears to once have been a strange cloning factory that is now producing sentient clouds of energy that demand to be escorted to the surface to witness a sunset are the kinds of strange manifestations that can't directly be owned by a player character, but will undoubtedly be experienced by them. In most fantasy games, magic is a means of allowing in a sense of the fantastic, as well as a way to move a plot in a direction that it couldn't otherwise go were it to be based on the scientific laws of nature and physics as we understand them. It allows for concepts such as time, mortality, morality, and divinity to take on different forms, resist the laws of the real world, and become malleable to the desires of character growth and narrative development. Removing magic from many of these kinds of storytelling makes the story almost impossible. For Numenera, the Numenera itself is the magic of the game. What it provides, though, in its form of hyper-advanced technological wonders that blur the line between reality and magic, is the gift of agency to players and GMs to collectively build the stories they want to tell and experience. The unimaginable complexity of technology in this game is actually a trick. It's instead an open invitation for you to define your character, world, and experience in the way that you as a player or GM want to. It's asking a player what they see and instead of telling them what they saw. Numenera in many ways embodies the essence of the dead author, allowing those who play the game to take greater ownership over their experience and play with it. They play with it instead of playing in it. Monty Cook Games does have a specific setting with specific terminology, and in their supplements they have definitely defined the ways in which certain elements of their techno-fantasy magicscape work, but the books always stress the malleability of this in player hands as seen in the countless areas of the map that are purposeful left undefined, or the scope of the game's continent, the bulk of which is completely unexplored and allows players to create stories and settings that have never known terms such as the steadfast or the order of truth. To the degree that this setting has been defined, it has been defined for you to use as a set of suggestions for interpreting the spirit of what this game communicates to its players, not the law. By allowing a game's magic to exist without clear intention being known or understood, and being open to player interpretation, that is to say, 
say, without the mandate of a divine source such as literal gods in the religious sense as we'd find in a medieval fantasy setting, the Numenera is free to be what players need for their characters. It can be as magical, mystical, grounded, practical, or anywhere in between as needed. It is also free to be what the GM needs for the story or for the challenge if a more game-centric focus is what is desired. By allowing every character to use ciphers, artifacts, and oddities, and for GMs to be endlessly creative with shaping and designing their discoveries, the mystery and wonder of the game becomes accessible to all character types and allows for complex, unpredictable scenarios. The rules and math of the game allow for an explanation for why there's success and failure, but by lifting the game's magic out of being tied directly to specific character types or direct and explained narrative origin, it allows for greater creative use and interpretation. The setting of the Ninth World offers the Numenera as a tremendous set of toys for play, but they can be used as needed, not as directed. The malleability of the setting allows different views of the Ninth World to come in and out of focus, allowing a campaign to take on different flavors and themes, be it as the book outlines post-apocalyptic, somewhat medieval fantasy, horror, some type of epic fantasy journey, or simply as Numenera Discovery advises, everything all at once. In my experience, the knee-jerk reaction to being introduced to Numenera is to describe it as science fiction, often with the abbreviated term sci-fi. A lot of the art does lean in this direction, as does any description that involves describing the setting as taking place in the future. When observing the spirit that these books try to convey, though, one doesn't find the kind of meticulous, plausibly real technology that one would come to expect of science fiction in its strictest sense. I do think that with the introduction of crafting, salvaging, and community building rules brought about in Numenera Destiny, players and GMs could lean more into the science if they wish. But the Numenera isn't to be fully understood. It always contains more mystery and more wonder. There are always more ravels to unfold. As I said earlier, this is a sleight of hand the game plays. It constantly hides definition in order for you as the player or the GM to be able to find something to fit your experience. Another term often used for the game is futuristic. This too is somewhat ill-fitting, as to describe something as futuristic, we need to ask whose future we're talking about. The humans of the Ninth World are not related to our sense of humanity. To ask their origin is the same as asking our own origin. In fact, given that the game establishes that there have been massive civilizations that predate the setting which were not human, one could come up with an endless amount of ways to speculate how or why humanity exists in the Ninth World. Anyone who would likely to describe Numenera as a futuristic game is doing the setting a disservice and should do their best to sort of sever the connection they have with their own perspective of 21st century Earth and what could possibly exist a billion years into the future, where they don't have any direct connection to what they're experiencing now. To understand what the Numenera is, we ought to imagine a young civilization of people whose origins are a mystery and thus open to wide interpretation. They find themselves introduced to wild technologies left behind civilizations whose scope, scale, and nature they have no means of fully comprehending. What has been left behind has changed the Earth from its natural state in all manner of fantastic ways. There exist buried ruins and secrets from previous civilizations, hidden doors to different dimensions, spaces where only pure information builds reality, living machines who follow instructions that date back to unimaginable time, or who find the state the world is in as an invitation to abandon their orders, genetic mutations that have complicated and altered the biology of organisms and entire ecosystems, abandoned vehicles that can sail among the stars, and so much more. What the Numenera provides for stories, characters, and scenarios is an eternal justification. It is not always a question of how something works or why, but instead a matter of what your characters and stories will do with endless mystique and wonder. The Numenera is an infinite horizon of potential, rhetorically, narratively, and mechanically. Thank you so much for watching, and please consider giving a like, subscribing, and turning on notifications for weekly Numenera and Cypher System content.